السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ویلکم ٹو انادر کمپیوٹر سائنس لیکچر ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس اسٹوریج ڈیوائسز ان دی اولڈ سلیبس دس واز دی سیکنڈ ہاف آف چیپٹر نمبر سکس ویر ایز ان دا نیو سلیبس دس از اے پارٹ آف سیکشن نمبر ٹو ہارڈ ویئر اوکے سو there are many uh, there are five types of storage or memory the first one is the primary storage or primary memory then we have secondary memory or secondary storage then we have offline storage then we have cloud storage and virtual memory these two cloud and virtual have been recently added in the new syllabus whereas these three things have been there since 2015 in the old syllabus then we are going to have a look at the uh, further types of memory when we are discussing primary memory so we have three types available ram rom and cache or cache uh, there are two pronunciations for it some manufacturing company is uh, name it is at call it as cache whereas uh, with e silent and the others call it as cache so it's really up to you whatever you want to call in our local market this is also known as cache or cpu cache ram and rom were there in the previous syllabus as well whereas this cache is something new this is basically a special type of memory when we talk about secondary memory so we only have two options hdd means hard disk drive and ssd solid state drive offline storage uh, then has further five types cd dvd blu-ray disk flash memory and portable devices or portable drives such as your portable hard drive knowing this hierarchy first is important so that uh, we can go ahead and discuss each type clearly <coughs> there are three types of cloud storage as well but uh, there is but they are not uh, officially uh, what you can say they do not differ in the technology they just differ in the type of users or the uh, what you can say uh, the um, the data is stored on the cloud in the similar way there is no difference of technology or the data is uh, it the net server network is the same the only difference is how many people can access it so that is why i'm not labeling its type over here we'll just discuss it where when we come on to the topic of cloud storage whereas virtual memory do not have any type there is only a one type of virtual memory that being said let's come to our first topic the first thing in primary memory that is ram now one thing which you should know about primary memory or primary storage is that primary storage is something uh, that is it is a type of memory that is directly accessible by the cpu or which is directly accessed by the cpu all the time let me just add that bit over here as well is accessible or you can say is in direct contact of the processor or the cpu all the time okay it is always in the direct contact of cpu or processor no matter which type of uh, memory we are talking about whereas when we talk about uh, the secondary storage or the secondary memory then it is not always in contact with the cpu
when you have to fetch a file from secondary memory first of all it is transferred to the one of the components in the primary memory either RAM or either in the cache and afterwards the CPU is able to access it CPU cannot directly read a file from the uh, your uh, drive such as hard drive or SSD first of all the file needs to be copied into the RAM and from there it moves to the processor chip through registers or cache and then the processor or the CPU is finally able to read the contents of the file same uh, offline storage is something uh, which acha when we talk about offline memory or offline storage our uh, offline storage is storage media that doesn't need to be plugged in or connected to a computer all the time it doesn't need to be constantly uh, fed some power or it doesn't need to be constantly uh, connected to a computer whenever you need to access the files on it you can connect it to your computer or laptop access the files and then you can take it out without providing it any power that is why it is known as offline storage okay that being said so the first thing which we have is in the list is primary memory and the first sort of primary memory is a RAM so first of all we are going to have a look at RAM and then ROM and then cache or cache so RAM stands for random access memory it is a volatile memory or it is a temporary mem memory which means that it holds it loses all its content as soon as the power is turned off if you are working on an unsaved file and uh, for some reason your PC is shut down then you lose that file when you are going to turn that PC back on or your laptop back on or your device back on you are not going to get that file because it was there in your RAM and because a RAM cannot hold something permanently when the power goes out RAM is cleaned off it holds the data temporarily and provides it to the processor in pieces for processing in place of pieces you can also say in blocks this is the purpose of the RAM since the CPU cannot directly access the files on the hard drive the files from the hard drive are first fed to the RAM and from RAM block by block or piece by piece that data is sent to the processor for processing it is faster than other memories but its volatil volatility is a big drawback since it cannot hold data for very long time then it is this is a very big drawback the larger the size of the RAM installed the faster a computer will work the, uh, the size of the RAM inside your computer is one of the key points which determine the performance or the speed of your computer the more RAM it will have the faster it will work the low the lesser RAM it your PC has the more it will hang the slower it will work you have studied about buffers and interrupts so buffers are often made up of RAM buffers inside the uh, CPU uh, buffers inside printers inside your scanners or any hardware uh, hardware device or any peripheral device which you can connect to the computer if it contains a buffer then remember that it is most likely made up of RAM chips now we have two types of RAM one is the DRAM or the dynamic RAM and the one is the SRAM or static RAM we'll get to the SRAM later on first let's discuss DRAM each dynamic RAM chip contains millions of transistors and capacitors now transistors and capacitors are electronic devices and uh, I hope you have studied them in your physics O-level physics subject 
if you don't have then that's fine you don't need the technical uh, details of these components just remember that each DRAM chip contains millions of transistors and capacitors now what uh, how does the transistors work transistors work as a gatekeeper they allow a charge or data to be stored inside the capacitor or to go outside of the capacitor data is uh, stored in form of charges now what does the capacitor do capacitor holds bits of information basically charges and transistors acts as a control switch for the information being held DRAMs need to be constantly refreshed every 15 seconds or else they will lose the data because the capacitors which are used to make DRAMs they cannot hold the charge for more than 15 seconds so after 15 seconds the RAM is supposed to refresh means whatever data was there whatever data it uh, that was stored on the DRAM it will all be erased and new data would be written on to it they are less expensive to manufacture they consume less power and have higher storage capacity the next type of RAM which we have is static RAM or SRAM static RAM doesn't need to be refreshed constantly as they are made up of flip-flops flip-flops are a type of circuit that are made up of logic gates and transistors they do not contain your capacitors SRAMs are much faster than DRAMs because they do not need to be refreshed every 15 seconds processors memory such as cache is often made up of SRAM they are more expensive than DRAM they have less storage capacity you cannot make uh, let's suppose 2 GB RAM out of SRAM it would be too much costly now this is an example of DRAM this is something which you usually find in your laptop or your personal computer whereas this is an example of SRAM SRAM looks like this now SRAM is either found inside the CPU chip or it is found uh, outside the CPU chip in form of uh, cache or mostly it is found in a small elect uh, programmable devices such as automatic microwave oven or uh, automatic uh, washing machines and other type of devices uh, such or remote control cars where a larger RAM is not needed the microprocessor chip inside the device only needs a few MBs of RAM so over there there uh, we often have the SRAM chip inside toy cars inside remote control uh, operated equipment inside automatic electronic devices and so on the next type of memory which we have is ROM ROM stands for read only memory and it is a form of non volatile memory that means it is a permanent memory whose contents can't be changed they are used to store a startup routine of a system for example your BIOS chip is an example of ROM when your computer starts you see a black screen with some settings written on it or you can go to the uh, settings option and change where to boot from that is known as the BIOS screen basic input output output uh, setup and uh, that chip which contains this data is a example of ROM this is the only thing we, about ROM which you need to know there are types of ROM but they are not a part of your syllabus neither the old one or neither the new one so you don't really need to know then we have cache this is something uh, this is a special type of high speed memory that is found within the CPU chip it has been recently added in the syllabus it stores data and instructions which are frequently needed by the CPU the larger the cache size the better the CPU will perform modern day CPUs have up to three levels of cache or cache to make performance faster usually level 1 and level 2 are inside the CPU chip whereas level 3 cache is supposed to be outside the CPU chip in form of a separate chip besides the processor on the motherboard which looks something like this now another thing uh, which the examiner often gives and which you should know is the application of RAM and ROM 
in an embedded system or in a microprocessor controlled system the examiner would give you an example of a toy car or maybe a, a automatic washing machine or a microwave oven or something like that and he is going to ask you what is the application of ram and rom and microprocessor in this device so always remember that ram and rom are uh, used in many microprocessor controlled devices or toys for following tasks ram stores the factory settings sorry rom stores the factory settings startup routine and set routines for example functionalities of buttons means those settings which have been decided by the factory by the manufacturer they are stored in rom that how to turn on the device and when a user presses a button what functionality would be launched they are all stored in rom because the user cannot change it or they are not supposed to change whereas ram includes the user's customized instructions as well as the instruction received from remote control or keypad before being processed whereas the work of processor is to act upon the instruction and uh, perform whatever task the user has customized or the user has asked it to do like for example the user set a microwave to two minutes time then the processor's task would be to keep on running the microwave for two minutes or until the user cancels the time and takes out his dish from the microwave the next uh, thing which we have is now we have secondary storage and this Achha, before we start just remember that this slide is very important from the exam point of view and the examiner often asks this question about micro -proce microprocessor control devices and it always consists of two parts that what is the function of ROM in it and RAM in it so you should learn this up very carefully the next we have are like we discussed after primary we have secondary memory and we have two types of it hard disk drive and ssd and just remember that it is not in direct contact of the processor or cpu all the time or it is just not in the direct contact of this processor or cpu whatever goes from the hard drive to processor or from the processor to hard drive it goes through ram or cache so what is the hard disk drive or HDD for short it is the most common type of storage media which is used inside your laptops or your computers desktop computers Des data is stored on magnetic surface of disks which are packed inside the hard disk with a read write head in fact there are multiple read write heads inside a hard disk drive data can be stored on both the upper and lower surface of the disks or they are also known as platters the read write head can move very quickly to ensure quick access of data data is stored in form of sectors and tracks a sector on a track contains fixed number of bytes usually 4 uh, MBs or uh, per sector they are slower than primary storage hence larger applications which require multiple read write operations in short times may cause the program to slow down or become non-responsive while the read write heads search for next block of data however they are inexpensive as compared to ssd this is the di internal diagram of a um, hard disk drive inside your hard disk drive which uh, looks something like this there are multiple platters or multiple disks which are stacked on top of each other three or four disks and on the side of those disks there are read write heads one on the top and one of on the below of each disk because these uh, platters or these disks are double sided data can be written on top of it as well as on below it if you view it on from the top then you would this is the this is a circular disk and each circular disk is logically not physically divided into 
tracks concentric tracks these each of these circle is a track and inside each track there are further divisions which are known as sectors like this and a combination of track and sector makes up one block of data this is one block of data this is a read write head now when a program is installed the hard drive is constantly rotating the disk on the hard drive is constantly rotating so when you start saving a file each block has a specific uh, number of bytes which it can store let's suppose you had a file of uh, 16 MB so 4 MB would be stored in this block and then the next 4 MB would be stored in the next empty block which may be over here or over here or over there the adjust it ne almost never happens that a whole program or a whole file is stored on adjacent tracks they are always scattered randomly because the disks keep on uh, they keep on spinning so when you try to run a uh, heavy program such as you try to open adobe premiere or a 3d studio max or something very heavy then it takes time because the uh, hard drive has to look all the bl available blocks of data on its surface before it can completely run the program so if the first block is over here the second block of data is over there the third is over there fourth is over there fifth is over there sixth is over there seventh is seventh to fourteenth is on this platter and then 15 till 30th is on this platter so it takes time for the hard drive to locate all the available blocks of data for a certain program and uh, then load it into the RAM and provide it to the CPU sometimes this can cause your computer to hang up and be non-responsive for a while the next type of uh, secondary storage device which we have is solid state drive or SSD and it was designed in order to reduce this uh, problem that the blocks of data are scattered all over the hard drive and it takes time to open larger files they contain no moving parts such as rotating disks or read write heads and consist entirely of NAND chips most of SSDs make use of NOR chips which are much faster but cost increase so there are two types of technologies when it comes to SSD one consists of NAND chips and the other one consists of NOR chips now the difference between them is that in NOR chips data can be erased or read one byte at a time whereas NAND chips can read or write blocks of data means 4 MB or uh, more than 4 MB in one read or write operation can be written so as you can see if you write one byte at a time and you write 4 MB at a time so NAND chips become much faster thus two types of SSDs are available which are in the market which are labeled as flash which uses NAND chips and EEP ROM which uses NOR chips the, this one if it is labor if the SSD you purchase from the market has somewhere written EEP ROM on its label on its box that means it is much faster and all obviously it would be much costlier there would be a difference of about two to three thousand in the cost they are more reliable lighter in weight consume much less power don't they don't heat up because there is no motor or moving part in it they are very thin as they consist only of chips and they are much faster in terms of data access because all the files are stored together they are not scattered on uh, different platters or different disks the cost is very high and aren't they aren't much durable they aren't much durable because uh, there is a specific number of times you can read or write the data from uh, the disk after that the uh, NAND chips or NOR chips they just become unresponsive or they just wear out it is roughly 20 if you write read or write 20 GBs of data per day then your SSD would only last for maximum three years and as soon as three years means 36 months time period is over the hard drive your hard drive or your uh, basically your SSD it would simply become non-responsive or it would simply die out on the very next day 
this is a quick uh, review of how inside of SSD and hard drive look like this is an SSD it only consists of chips and this is a hard drive which consists of this is the read write head and these are the platters or disks is, is stacked on top of each other there's a quick uh, comparison there they have faster performance no vibration or noise or no moving parts they are more energy efficient whereas they are cheaper per GB means their cost is very low and as compared to SSD and they are available in larger versions it's highly likely that you would not find 2 terabyte SSD in the market but you can easily find 2 terabyte of hard drive in the market so we'll keep it till here today and uh, this completes our primary and this completes our primary and secondary memory we have discussed these three and we have discussed these two and in the next lecture inshallah we'll discuss offline cloud and virtual memory all right this chapter is very important and it often comes in the paper so please make sure that you understand everything if you have any problem feel free to ask me take care allah hafiz